Welcome to the night sky. I'm Michael Martin, and through this monthly series, I'm going to walk you through the best objects and events that you can get out to observe and image under the nighttime sky. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years or decades of experience studying the nighttime sky, we'll have something here for you to go out to observe or image, regardless of your equipment or years of experience. If you enjoy this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let me know what you plan to get out to observe and image this month in the comment section below. Now let's begin April with one of the most relaxing things that you can do in amateur astronomy that doesn't involve any equipment whatsoever. Let's take a look at some of the best meteor showers for the month of April. Nothing quite compares to the peace and calm that you will feel as you go outside with no equipment whatsoever and look up at the nighttime sky, hoping to see streaks of light moving across it in the form of a meteor shower. The second major meteor shower of 2022 hits this April in the form of the Lyrids. Now there are a few things that you're going to want to do to maximize your experience with this or any meteor shower. First and foremost, you're going to want to get away from as much light pollution as you possibly can. Several of these meteors are going to be faint, and the more light pollution there is, the more they'll be washed out in the background of space. Second, Make sure to dress comfortably and to take a lounge chair or a blanket to lay down to look at as much of the sky as you can. The peak of the shower for 2022 will be on the night of April 21st into the early morning of April 22nd. Begin your night by going outside around 11 p.m. on the 21st. Look for the brightest star just over the horizon in this part of the sky, Vega. The best time to view this shower will be before 2 a.m., as the rising moon will begin to wash out some of the fainter meteors. Look for this year's average to be around 10 to 15 meteors per hour, particularly with the moon in the way for a good part of the night. Let's begin with the phases of the moon, and then we're gonna to move to some lunar events for this month that you could focus on. April actually has two new moons, beginning with the first one on April 1st. It's during this time that the moon rises and sets with the sun, so it's really not visible at any point in the nighttime sky. Following that, we have the first quarter phase on April 9th. This is my favorite time to go out and observe the moon with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of April 16th, the full moon rises at sunset and shines for the entire night. The last quarter moon follows on April 23rd, and the second new moon this month hits on April 30th. For lunar events this month, I want to focus on some of the last days of April, when the moon is going to be making a close pass to several planets in the early morning sky, right around sunrise. Go out and face towards the east between the dates of April 25th and April 27th. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to observe or image the beautiful sight of the moon passing by Saturn, Mars, Neptune, Jupiter, and Venus, each of these different mornings. If you're able to take a picture of it with a DSLR or your cell phone, please be sure to tag me at Late Night Astronomy on Instagram to share your picture with me and our community. It may even show up in a future episode of the Night Sky series. Up next are the planets of our solar system, and it is a busy month for planets, especially planets making very close approaches to each other in the early morning sky. We're going to start off this month, though, as we do every month 
with Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. Mercury starts the month right near the Sun, but then rises in the Northwest right after sunset. As we get later into the month, it will actually make a close approach to the Pleiades Open Cluster, but it will be a difficult sight with light from the setting sun getting in the way, along with it being only 10 degrees above the horizon. As we switch to the early morning sky, Venus continues to dominate in the southeast and is a wonderful target for the naked eye, binoculars, or a telescope. It begins the month closer to Mars and Saturn, but by the end of the month will be making its way towards the gas giant Jupiter. This fast approach to Jupiter culminates in an impressive conjunction at the end of the month that will bring these two planets within less than a degree of each other from our perspective in the nighttime sky. To put that into perspective, I will easily be able to see both of these objects in the same field of view using a 25 millimeter eyepiece through my telescope at 48 times magnification, and even a 12.5 millimeter eyepiece showing off 96 times magnification. These are two bright objects to be in conjunction with each other, and you should be able to see them well into the early morning as the sun rises. Go out with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, or a telescope to check them out each morning, culminating with their close approach on April 30th. Moving on to Mars, it continues to travel higher into the southeast sky as we await its close approach to Earth for some amazing views coming up later this year. Like Venus, it too will be making a close approach to a gas giant this month when it approaches Saturn. This conjunction early in the month on April 4th will also have these two planets viewable in the same field of view through low-powered eyepieces. Jupiter starts off the month low to the horizon, but rises higher each day, leading to the aforementioned close approach to Venus at the end of this month. Saturn continues to become a nice early morning target as it rises higher into the sky for better views just prior to sunrise. Switching back to the early evening sky is Uranus, which moves closer to the sun each evening and becomes a near impossible target to view when we get to the later half of April. We finish our busy tour of the planets this month with Neptune, which comes into conjunction with Jupiter on April 12th. This isn't going to be as easy to see or as impressive as the other close approaches that are mentioned earlier in this video, but it still would be a good one to try to go out and see on the 12th if you're able to. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and observe one of the conjunctions that's going to be occurring out of the several close approaches this month. The one I'm going to do my best to try to see is the conjunction of Venus and Jupiter on April 30th. Those are incredibly bright objects, and with no equipment or a high-powered telescope, it's going to be a remarkable thing to see or image. If you're able to get out and see it, please be sure to share your experience in the comment section below. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, we're going to be looking at some of the best constellations and deep sky objects that you can get out to see this spring. Let's begin by talking about some of the major constellations of the spring sky. Now you don't need any equipment whatsoever to go out and enjoy seeing these, and maybe even to sketch them or to try to learn the nighttime sky. The major constellations out in the spring are going to be Ursa Major, Butes, Leo, Cancer, Virgo, and Hydra. Within these constellations are some of the best deep sky objects that the night sky has to offer this spring. Now these are going to be the most difficult things to find and observe on our list for this month's video. You're going to more than likely need a medium to large telescope to get the best views of them, 
although several this month can be viewed with a pair of binoculars. Get away from light pollution, and that includes the moon washing out some of the faint details of these galaxies in particular. Let's begin this month by looking up for the Ursa Major constellation. We're going to look for a star that is in the Big Dipper called Dube. Off from that star, we're going to star hop until we come across M81 and M82, Bode's Nebula. M81 is a classic spiral galaxy that can be found with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Parked right next to it is the Cigar Galaxy, M82. Here's one of my favorite shots of these two galaxies, taken with my Canon SL2 135mm Sam Yang lens and Skyguider Pro tracking mount, showing off two great targets to get us started with the spring sky. Another beautiful but slightly more difficult spiral galaxy to view is the famous Whirlpool Galaxy. Let's start at the end of the Big Dipper's handle with the star Alcade. Just up from that star you will find M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. This one is more likely to be washed out by light pollution, and you are going to need probably a 10 or 12 inch telescope to bring out some of the details in the spiral arms. Finally, let's switch things up a bit by taking a look at a nice globular cluster in the spring sky. Containing roughly 500,000 stars, it will show up as a blurry faint object through binoculars, and then will begin to resolve itself sharper and sharper as you move up to larger and larger telescopes. I've got a detailed video on several more deep sky objects that you can go out and view in the spring sky, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Those are just some of the most impressive things that you can go out to see or image for the month of April. If there's anything I left off of this list or anything that you plan to see, please let me know what those things are and any questions that you may have in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.